Tutorial 7 Creating a Report and Exporting to CAD Using AnchorWall Software Version 6.0 To create a report in AnchorWall Software, go to File Menu and select PDF Report. The Report dialog box allows the designer to customize the report depending on the use and audience. First, select the wall you wish to create a report for. As AnchorWall software allows the designer to run an unlimited number of walls within a given project, this is necessary. We have only created one wall at this point, so that is all that is shown. The designer can toggle on or off any aspect of the report. Typically, you would always include the project information and the project design inputs, such as SRW units, soil conditions, reinforcements used, and etc. The third dialog box titled Panel Geometry provides information about the wall as a whole, including geometry, panelization details, etc. The Panel Results options are basically the detailed calculations for individual panels. Note that the first option, the Factors of Safety Summary, gives every factor of safety for every mode of failure for every panel in the wall, which could be hundreds if not thousands of lines. This feature is not recommended to use unless it is explicitly asked for by a reviewing agency. Typically, if the report is being submitted for review by another engineer or government agency, they would likely only want to see detailed calculations for a handful of critical panels or sections throughout the wall, such as the maximum heights or where loading changes. Again, I would recommend leaving this off unless absolutely required. In the Panel Results area, the user can select individual panels that the detailed calculations will be displayed for, as defined in the Panel Selection box in the top right corner. Typically, a reviewer may want to see the maximum height calculations and perhaps one or two more critical panels, which can be selected by checking those panels off. If the Select All button is hit, all panels will be checked and detailed calculations as defined in the Panels Results area will be printed for each panel. As you would imagine, the report could easily be 1,000 pages long if this was done, so it is not recommended. The user can now save the report as a PDF to a specified file path as defined in the Save PDF Report To field. The report can be previewed on screen and printed. The front page of the report is an executive summary of the wall. This includes the project information, block and grid type, and the total quantity summary. The next few pages detail the design methodology and various related constants, maximum and minimum design limits, etc. This is followed by more detailed block and geogrid data and design soil properties. Next, the wall layout or geometry is defined, first by the station layout, which is essentially the top and bottom of wall grades at various positions along the wall. The panel then defines the wall in terms of the SRW block being used, breaking the wall down into individual wall panels from the far left, which is always panel 1, to the end of the wall on the far right. The Panel Extents table defines each panel with respect to the top of wall elevation, the base elevation which is the top of the gravel base and therefore includes wall embedment and the left and right extents of that panel. This table is particularly useful to the contractor or surveyor laying out the wall. As such, this table is automatically included in the CAD output so that it can appear on the actual construction drawings, making it easy to reference for the contractor. By breaking the wall down into panels, we can then calculate the quantities of the wall, infill or reinforced materials and base volume, then add them up to get a project total. The reinforcement details specify the location, number of layers and length and type of grid for each panel. These geogrid areas are then summed up for a project total at the bottom. Following the reinforcement details are the detailed calculations for a specific panel. In this case, we chose the highest panel in the project. By scrolling down, we can see the analysis graphics followed by step-by-step -step analysis results. We can now close the report and return to AnchorWall software. The next step in the design process is to export the design to CAD. Go to File and Export to AutoCAD. 
First, choose the wall you want to be exported. In this example, we have only done one wall, so it is defaulted. The user can input the desired text height in either inches or millimeters. Then select the text scaling that will be used in AutoCAD. Next, the user has the option to export the elevation view of the wall and the horizontal to vertical scale it is exported at. This will be the panelized face view of the wall. If you are running in Imperial, one foot will equal one AutoCAD unit and likewise for meters and metric. The user can also export any or all of the individual panel cross sections as selected in the Panels to Export box. The wall layout table will automatically be included with the CAD export. A DXF file is generated and it can be viewed immediately. Now that we have designed our wall, created a custom report, generated a RISA 3.0 file for global stability analysis, and output our design to CAD, we can exit the program or continue designing more walls in our project by selecting Create Wall in the Project tab. As this new wall will be on the same site, I will likely be using the same GeoGrid and SRW block combination and the site conditions would be similar. As such, if the toggle switch next to Create Wall is selected, the new wall will retain all of the settings you have defined for the current wall and you can go right to the Stations tab to start laying out the new wall. This can be done for an unlimited number of new walls with any modifications to the settings being made as necessary within that wall file. We hope you enjoy this tutorial and recommend checking back to AnchorWall.com for future tutorials. Thanks for listening and we look forward to your comments and feedback.